Welcome to Thinking Tackle. I'm Adam Penning and we're down here at CMEX Blue Pool. Now this guy needs no introduction whatsoever, Simon Scott. You've seen him in quite a few programmes with me. My dear friend, nice to have you along again, mate. Good to see you, Adam. Now, if I was ever going to put, put you on a venue that was tailor-made for you and your style of fishing, it's the Blue Pool. Oh, I love this place, Adam. It is just the most fabulous fishery. There's about 150, 200 fish in crystal clear water. It's yeah. weedy fantastic gravel margins, it's perfect stalking water. Well we've both got a huge affinity for this venue and uh, probably one of the first places we actually wet a line together wasn't yeah, it? Yeah we, we historically did features here maybe 10-12 years ago yeah. uh, and then the venue was shut uh, and actually I came and netted some fish out and right. they got moved to the North Lake. So Yankee. what was the idea behind that, what was going on, the management of that? Uh, I think they wanted to reduce the stock in here, they were developing the uh, the North Lake at Yateley as a day ticket water. Okay, um, so and, develop that and, yeah, and let uh, these fish get bigger. And that's exactly what's happened here, they've taken <laughs> fish out, the weeds come up and the fish yeah. are gone, woof, they've grown a lot. It's, it's, it's always been unique really in my opinion, I know you'll, you'll agree, it, in terms of big fish coming in very close in gin clear water, there's not many places where you can do that. No, no we've both stalked big, big fish. Yeah. yeah. And, and you know, historically years ago, maybe one in five fish was a 20 pounder. Now, what's the biggest fish? 41 thereabouts. You know, and there's a fair few 30s as well, so it's changed a lot. We're not quite sure what to expect. They've been under pressure in the edge for a lot of years by some very good anglers. It's gin clear, it's going to require some guile and some craftiness. I know you've got a few edges that you're going to well, we'll try show the guys. Things. We've got a selection of different baits and tactics. We're going to get down to the swims, we're going to drop the gear and, and form a base camp and then we're going to go off, farm some spots and get stalking. That's Brilliant. Okay, we're off with some blue pool stalking. Simon and I are going to go off, we're going to find areas we really like the look of. These are essential. We're looking for little spots in the edge where we think that have been cleaned off by fish or look that where we can present a bait. There's a lot of weed. Um, I've found two spots, one, one off the end of a tree trunk, which I'm baiting over in the corner, and I'm going to bait one right in close here, which is right close to a weed bed. As I said, Polaroids, essential. Drab clothing, essential. If you're going to do any kind of stalking, take those points of view and also make sure you keep yourself low to the skyline with little, little movement as possible. I mean, I'm well back from the water now. When you go forward, try and keep low, footfall to a minimum, etc. Two main weapons that I use for baiting up, if it's not by hand, this fellow is absolutely essential. It's an extending baiting spoon, goes out a long, long way and allows you to get underneath little tree canopies and so on and so forth. Use this a lot. And the other guy is the ubiquitous spod rod although not really using it for spodding as such, using it um, as a dapping tool where we're just filling the spod and just lowering it nice and accurately onto the spot that we're going to bait. Um, the bait mix that I've got for this kind of fishing, uh, for your open water fishing, you know, um, guys use boilies and things like that. I find that for, for stalking, small baits and uh, dark colour and lots of smell is really where it's at. Pellet's very, very good, but I know it's been used an awful lot on here, so my mix is consisting of a, a very, very dark red ground bait. And to that, I've added some red maggots, which are dead, I've frozen them, so they won't be wriggling off. And all the juice comes from this lot. Now this is hemp, and some of you might not be familiar with these. These have kind of gone out of favor, but these are maple peas. Very, very famous old fashioned carp catching bait, very, very effective. And what I've done is I've boiled the whole lot together with a couple of cans of tuna, some chilli flakes and a lot of salt. And I've then used the juice from that to uh, dampen the ground bait and make a nice sludge. And I've also obviously put a load of this hemp and maple in with the mix. So that's what we're going to be putting on, applying to these spots. So Simon and I are going to walk around periodically, checking the spots throughout the day. Whichever ones get fish on, they're the ones we're going to be fishing first. Okay, so coming into the swim, use whatever cover you can, keep low. Walk what I call heel to toe, put your feet down nice and softly. There's a lot of fish at this end of the lake. Simon and I have seen the majority of the stock up here and we think it's because of the weed. Most of the weed is up here, it's growing to the surface and it's a matter of watching the channels and seeing where the fish are moving. There's quite a few out in front of here, it looks really, really good and there's a nice spot deep down to the right where I can just about see the bottom. It's not a glowing, crystal clear gravel spot of which there is an abundance around this lake. Some of those are a little bit obvious now, they've obviously been hammered, so I'm going to just drop some bait on the edge of the weed using the spot dapping technique, see if I can get this spot going. Okay, 
Okay, so now what I want to do is get some bait in around the margins of the blue pool. And what I want to do is talk you through the various ingredients I'm going to put in the bait. Let's start off with a pigeon conditioner. This stuff, it smells of sick. It is quite disgusting, but in my experience, carp absolutely love it. So what it is, is con uh, pigeon conditioner with extra hemp added to it and a little bit, a uh, few maples and a few peas put in there. I've added a bit of salt when I've been stewing it and I cooked that up two days ago and it's been stewing in, in that slop ever since. So put a couple of scoops of that in. Then another ingredient I'm really a massive fan of is the small trout pellets. These are little two mil pellets and in my experience again carp absolutely love these and these get them really preoccupied. They're only tiny food items and if a light scattering them on, on the bottom will keep the fish really rooting about in the gravel. That's what I want to try and achieve is to get the fish really hunting about to try and find the food. So we'll put a couple of handfuls of those in. I also put a small pinch of slightly bigger pellets in just to mix the size of the food items up a bit to keep the fish working about on the bottom but again I'm really quite keen to keep the, the items small on the bottom to keep the fish working about. Then I'm going to add a little bit of ground bait, you know, maybe half a pint of ground bait in there and then lastly a bit of lake water on top of that and give it a good old stir around. It's time to get your fingers in there and, and really uh, mix it up. And then I'll, I'll add a bit more of the, the seed mix or a bit more ground bait to get a nice sloppy consistency or a bit more lake water if it's a bit dry. But you can see it's turning into a quite a sticky, gloopy mess. And that's exactly what I want to try and achieve. So I'll give that a bit of a stir around. Now, in terms of getting this actually into the swims, there's kind of two, two approaches. Put a little bit more lake water in there. I want it to be quite sloppy. So there's a couple of ways of getting it actually into the lake. Uh, the first way, the most obvious way, because that bit of ground bait binds it, is to, is to actually ball it up and throw it underarm into the, into the spots. That's fine. Uh, and then what I can do, if I'm trying to get it into a slightly more tricky spot, is put some into a spod, so stick some down into the spod like that and just use a, sh a short nine foot stalking rod just to swing it out and plonk it down on the spot. So either way is good and obviously it depends on the situation I find myself in when I get to a spot that looks carpy.